okay rules to determine if something is aromatic anti-aromatic or non-aromatic the first rule is the compound must contain at least one ring the second rule is all the ring atoms must be planar or sp2 the third rule is all the ring atoms must be in conjugation with a pi system meaning you have a double bond, a single bond, a double bond, a single bond. So the ring, the compound must have at least one ring. All the ring atoms must be planar and in conjugation with a pi system. The last rule is the electrons contributing to aromaticity must obey Huckel's rule. And Huckel's rule as we know is 4n plus 2 um, and when you solve for n it sh n should be equal to an integer value um, 0 1 2 3 it should not be a decimal value 0 0.5 1.5 so I'll show you examples of it so this this would be an example of an aromatic compound. So it has at least one ring. All the ring atoms, everything contained in this ring is planar and conjugated and it has six electrons in this ring. So it obeys Huckel's rule and it's aromatic. N, N is equal to 1 when you solve for N. Here's a second example. So I have 1, 2, 3 pi electrons and I wouldn't count the lone pairs shown here. I wouldn't count these. Whenever you see a lone pair next to a double bond you don't count it so you only count these so it's two four six six electrons and that obeys the 4n plus 2 rule so it's the, it's aromatic here's another example where you would count so you have two four and then the n has it's not it's not next to a double bond, so you would count this as a pair of electrons. So you have two, four, six. It's cyclic, it has six electrons, and they're all sp2, so it's aromatic. So that's, that's sp2, this sp2, sp2 all around. So it's six pi electrons and n is equal to 1. Now I said it has to be it can't be sp3 but you can have sp2 so when you count this the way I look at it the easiest way to, to look at it is to to know that if you have 1 2 so this is 2 4 6 8 10 12 and 14 Another way that I I can quickly tell is if I do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If I have an odd number, then it's aromatic. So that's an easy way to tell. Um, I'll come back to this. So basically, this is an aromatic compound, even though this is SP hybridized. Now, here's an example of where you have two lone pairs. So, remember what I said when you have a lone pair and it's right next to a double bond? Let me go back to that example. When you have a lone pair next to a double bond, and you would count this. But when you have a lone pair directly attached to a double bond, you would not count this. Here you have a lone, you have two lone pairs they're not next to the double bond so you would count one of them 
So you count this as two, four, six, eight. So you have eight pi electrons. And when you have eight pi electrons, four n plus two would give you an integer. So it's considered an um, aromatic compound. Another another way to tell aromatic compounds is if, if it, it goes in it goes two six it goes up in four. So two six four fourteen eighteen. So I have two when four n plus two and n is equal to zero. I have six when n is equal to one. 10 when n is equal to 2 and so on so when you have this uh, this many um, electrons it's 8 pi electrons that doesn't fit so it fits into an anti-aromatic compound anti-aromatic compounds go 4 they go 4 8 they go up in 4s as well but they start they start at 4 so 4n plus 2 will not work. So it's considered anti-aromatic. It's usually like 4n itself. So 4n meaning it's anti-aromatic. But if it's 2, 6, 10, 14, 18, and then up. Or if you just count the, the bonds separately and you get an odd number, 1, 2. So if I had one pair one bond it would just be one and that would be two electrons and that's that's aromatic if i had one two three four five six seven that's fourteen electrons and that's aromatic but if you have remember you only count one of them not the other one because it's not directly attached so it's one two three four that's an even number and and it's also eight electrons which is which is anti-aromatic. Um, here's an example of of one. So I have cyclobutadiene. It's one, two. It's even. It's four electrons. So this would be anti-aromatic. Now anything that doesn't fit, anything that's not that's sp3 hybridized, that's um, non-cyclic non-conjugated, um, just a radical or anything that's not fitting into these two categories would be um, would be called a non-aromatic a non compound. So the example would be this. So this is not conjugated. It's sp3 hybridized. Um, so it's non-aromatic. This would be one, two, three, four, eight pi electrons. So this would be anti aromatic. This is cyclo octa tetra This is the 2D structure. And at first glance, it's anti aromatic, just looking at the 2D structure. But it bends into this structure. It still has eight, eight electrons in the top conformation. But in this conformation, it's it's no longer um, it's no longer it's no longer planar. So because it's not planar, it's non-aromatic. So anything that doesn't fit, anything that's not planar, sp2 or sp3 hybridized, non-cyclic, sp3 you know hybridized, would be called a non-aromatic. Here's a couple more examples. So I have naphthalene, which is one, two, three, four, five, or ten electrons, and it's aromatic. Anthracene, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fourteen electrons, and it's planar, conjugated, cyclic. It's aromatic. Now this looks like naphthalene, but it's not conjugated. Here, you have two hydrogens. So even though it's one, two, three, four, five, it's not it's not conjugated right here. So because of that, it's not aromatic. If you had a CH3 which connects it, that would make it aromatic, but 
if you just have two hydrogens, um, it makes it non-aromatic. Some like this is non-cyclic, so it's not aromatic. Something like this is eight pi electrons, so it's anti-aromatic. Okay, here's, here's another good example. So you have one, which is two electrons because of the positive ch positive charge. So this this would be considered uh, where you have four n plus two, and n is equal to zero. So this would be aromatic, the cyclopropanil. The radical has three electrons. So this would be one of those cases where you have an odd number, where you have a like when you have four n plus two, and it's and it's it comes out to be a, to be a decimal or something like that. So radicals are non-aromatic. Anion, that's you know when you count because it's it's considered um, when you're adding up the electrons, you have four electrons, and that's anti-aromatic. Here's some more examples. Cyclopentadienyl has a, a positive charge, so it's four electrons, and it's um, non-aromatic. It's anti-aromatic. This has five electrons, so it's it's non-aromatic. This has six electrons, so four n plus two n is equal to one, and this is aromatic. Here's some more examples um, to just show you when a, when a lone pair would be counted. So I have a plus charge, and I want to double check first to make sure that you know none of it is um, sp3 hybridized. So based on the positive charge, I know I know this is sp2, and then I count the number of electrons. I have six, so this is considered aromatic. This has eight because because of the lone pair. So this would be anti-aromatic, and then this has a radical, so that's non-aromatic. Uh, a couple more examples. Here you have a positive charge, uh, which makes that part sp two, but but down here you have sp three, so this would be non-aromatic. And here you have four electrons, and also you have sp3 stuff going on, so it's non non um, aromatic. Is these are heterocyclics? A heterocyclic is basically um, it looks like a benzene, but it has like an additional 